Good evening, guys. How you doing? Welcome to day two of trade period. Uh, I'm Terry. Dan is with with us as always. Good evening to you, my friend. Good evening to you. And good evening to all of our lovely viewers. What is happening in your world today, mate? Day two of trade period. Uh, making stupid graphics to put on the website. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, look, it was a relatively quiet day. It's uh, this time of year is always it's always interesting. We just wait. It's, it's like we're waiting for our our big fish to land, and the word big fish is going to get used a lot tonight. And the word big fish gets used a lot every single year when it comes to this week. Uh, well, we we do love the phrase big fish. So, but I mean, we've got we we got. It depends how you define big fish. Is it a superstar player? Uh, we've just been linked with Mark Pitney. He's 200 centimetres, so he's a fairly big fish. Yeah, uh, we'll uh, we'll definitely get onto him. So, yeah, that's it. So, guys, that's it. 30 minutes every day, every day of this trade period. If you're one of those people that doesn't like sifting through the news, you will like this show. The purpose is to really sift through the news of the day, um, bring you the relevant bits and pieces. We're not dealing with any rumours or we're not breaking stories here. We're really just bringing you the relevant information. Uh, from day to day and we'll give it to you in, in 30 minutes every day and hopefully you can be on your way and uh, all the stresses of trade week can be somewhat subdued um, but we'll see what happens let's uh, Dan let's get cracking mate let's start with the first bit of news for today or relevant bit of news for today another new name that popped up which was Tom Cutler now Tom Cutler made it clear today that he intends to be traded to Victoria. Uh, I was listening to Trade Radio today, and he spoke about uh, his manager uh, referred to the fact that um, uh, the Bombers, or well, he sort of implied that the Bombers and the Blues were interested in him. Uh, this guy is a utility and a midfielder. Dan, maybe you want to tell us a little bit more about Tom Cutler. And for those of you watching at home, did you see this news? Are you interested in this news? What do you think about Tom Cutler? Dan, take it away. Well, I mean, like, he's he's kind of the Swiss army knife of uh, players. So he, he does a little bit of everything. Started off as a halfback, um, met, broke into the Brisbane team that way, was utilised a bit more last year um, as in the middle, a bit more in the guts. Um, you saw He was really successful in that role, but obviously they went out and they got Lockie Neal, did a bit of a shift around there. So game time's been really at a premium for him. Um, but he's been smashing, smashing it in the knee full. 23 touches. Um, he loves a goal as well, 1.8. So he's a really, you'd say at Carlton, you could see him being used as a real attacking halfback flank, kind of like Newman was against the Eagles. He's got that ability to pop up outside 50, long raking kick. And if you look at the picture that we used for the uh, post earlier, he's quite a built boy as well. He's He's got a lot of muscle on the old guy. So, yeah, real young, fits the age profile as well that I keep drumming on about, that 24-year-old to 28, bang in that range. Decent amount of football as well, 66 AFL games. And his record speaks for himself. So his TPI that was asked, 2.86 with a potential of 7.94. So that puts him in your, your like Mark Murphy category when he maxes out. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I think I think whenever these new names come out, and a few questions have, have come up here uh, from some of the viewers about like what, whose position does he take on the list? Why do we need him? What have we got to you know? What are we going to give up to get him? And they're all relevant. I think at the end of the day, and and this is my opinion. I think, and, and I, I would I would figure that's what list managers are trying to do, without knowing. It's that you're trying to build a list where you have 27, 28, maybe 30 players that can play on any given week. And I think this guy could probably make a squad of 30 at Carlton. And, um, as a you know, where would he play? Well, I mean, we obviously just got rid of Daisy. Um, so we know that he could play across half back. It seems like he was tried as a midfielder this year for the Lions, just based on his stats and the way they, they work. But, um, yeah, where would you play him and what would it really cost to get him? Well, I think the one thing that's been not talked about is we delisted um, a couple of general defenders and now we don't have any any replacements once Cade Simpson has uh, gone in. Yeah. So to me, I think he's a natural replacement for Cade Simpson. 
I think that's what probably Carlton will be looking at. Who replaces Cade when he hangs up his boots? So to me, it's probably good that we get someone in now so we can prepare for that role. Yep. Well, it's interesting. Riley here, he would know a lot about him because Riley does do a lot of work with the NEFL. He said that he'd be in our best 22 and he played a lot as a wing uh, in the NEFL this year. And I don't think there's anyone more qualified in this audience to talk about Tom Cutler than, uh, than Riley. So... Yeah, I mean, it seems like he's going to be a cheap option. I, th I think the reason why, and again, this is me speculating, it seems like the reason why he hasn't been able to get a regular game at the Lions is probably because of how good they've been. And, you know, he's not going to be taking Mitch Robertson's spot. Uh, he's not going to be taking Jared Lyons and, and the like. So, um, yeah, I'm not really sure how, where this is going to go, but I thought it was just interesting because, you know, our, you know, the Carlton was named as one of the potential suitors for him. So... We'll see what happens. I, I, I'm probably leaning to more towards the, I don't think we'll go after him because it seems like a lot of the efforts are being focused on, you know, Papley, Martin, Betts, etc. Um, but this guy is probably just one to keep an eye out, it seems. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, like I say, like, started as a halfback flanker, spends a lot of time in midfield now. So, I mean, he's, he's got that option. We were very interested in Tomlinson for the last three years. So, very similar type of player in the fact he can play all across that halfback, all across the midfield. So, yep. real good. You kind of need them players. Premiership players, teams have players like that who can cover injury crises, come in, and he's more than capable. Very good footballer. Yep. All righty, let's move on. The next bit of news for the day was, was Josh Fraser. Um, so, we can confirm here that he was... He, he confirmed himself that he's going to be coaching the Northern Blues in 2020. There was a report yesterday, John from Carlton Live reported a story that he heard that uh, uh, Scott Camperiali would be returning to the club and coaching the Northern Blues. Um, uh, a gentleman by the name of John Frazina took to Twitter, as you can all see here. Uh, Josh Fraser, you know, he really just spoke about it openly on Twitter and confirmed that he'd be coaching. You can see here, can't wait to get stuck into season 2020. Um, so, I mean, that's a good thing. I've, I've done a little bit of work with Josh Fraser. I've worked alongside him a little bit for Northern Blues. He, he's a fantastic person. I mean, obviously the appeal of, of Scott Camperelli coming back to the club was, was interesting because, you know, we do love Scott Camperelli. Um, but we can confirm or Josh confirmed that he's going to be at the Northern Blues for 2020. Where do you sit with this, Dan? And for those in the audience, just to confirm for you, yep, Josh Fraser will be staying. How do you feel about this? Are you happy with Josh Fraser? What do you think about his his progress with the Northern Blues? I, I think he's probably in between a rock and a hard place with them being like, you know, really, they're not really an affiliate of Carlton Football Club. They're also their own entity as well. It's not Carlton owned. So I think Josh Fraser's got, it kind of gets a bad rap by Carlton fans. I mean, there's only so much he can do. Do you know what I mean? Like you've got to remember half that list isn't even AFL listed. So it's a tough one. I mean, the players love him. The young players rave about him. So to me, like I said last night about Barker, why change something that when the culture's good? You look mm. at a team like Adelaide where Camparelli is at the moment. That's a place that's made a lot of changes, tried a lot of innovative, try and get that word out, um, things. And it's backfired massively, hasn't it? So to me, like I'm not a big fan of mass change when things are starting to go well. I think, to be honest, we were guilty of not changing enough when we needed to. Yep. It's now starting to go in the place we want it to, so why change it? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, he's a good person to have at the club. I think Hayden Wall made a good point here about uh, Levi thanking him for his career restart because we do know that Josh did work with Levi pretty closely this year, especially when Levi was playing in the twos. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting. It, it's a win for a good person, I think. Oh, yeah, I mean, definitely. And I thought how he handled himself with that rumour was absolutely exemplary. Yep. Knocked it must it be quite hard to be told you're getting sacked when you've got a wife and kids. Yeah, he knocked it on its head. And, you know, obviously we as fans want to know the information as soon as possible. So for him to just come out on social, you know, on Twitter or whatever it was and just, just knock it on the head, that's it. We can move on, not have to talk about it anymore and not speculate on it anymore. It's, uh, it's probably a win for, for everyone involved. I, I do find it weird that Camparelli's not heavily touted to be the Adelaide head coach. I, I find that, that that one blags my head more. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like he was a pretty, um, it seemed like he was a pretty popular figure 
as an assistant coach. Highly rated. Well, I mean, everyone was saying he should be the Carlton head coach before we got um, Teague. They were all saying he was the next big coach and he's absolutely phenomenal at what he does. So I just find it weird yeah. they're not looking in-house, Adelaide. Yeah, it's interesting. All right, let's move on, mate. Uh, next up, we'll go with uh, our man Tom Papley. Just a bit of an update on what's happening with the Tom Papley situation. I think I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I speak for the majority of Carlton supporters in that everyone thinks that this is the number one priority and we need to get this deal done. So this is one we'll be tracking every single day, every single bit of news, every single quote. We're going to look at it here, and I mean it's important because we've got to get this guy over the line for obvious reasons. Um, now, the, the main update really for today is uh, the quote that was made by Scott Lucas. Um, and he said the following, he's, he made it very clear, Carlton is his preference, but we will keep, keep all options open. I mean, what do you think about this as a quote? Everyone that's watching, did you take anything of this? Um, are you worried about the Bombers? Dan, what do you think about this? Oh, I mean, I said it last week as well when everyone was kicking off because there was that rumour he said he didn't care where he went as long as it was a Victoria. I mean, you've, there's obviously reasons for it. The reasons that we've been told are his girlfriend wants to come home, she's Victorian, he's Victorian, he wants out, he doesn't like the Sydney lifestyle. So to me, it's it's logical if you want to leave and come to Victoria, you'll have your preference. But at the end of the day, you just want to get back to Victoria. So to me... 100% I think we are in the front row. The only reason I think it's kind of a worry is that if it drags on for a while, maybe other people's draft strategies like North and St. Kilda, who have been linked, may suddenly suddenly throw a mother load deal yep. at it. So I think this is the thing that we've got to get done as soon as possible. Um, because I think the longer it drags out and the longer other teams can't get their holes filled, yep. people might start coming in. But I think at the moment we're front runners because he wants that. Yeah, absolutely. There's a comment here, and this is coming up. I actually had a conversation about this with with Riley just earlier today. It was about um, the length of the trade period, and I think it's AJ Hoodie. Good evening to you, mate. He was saying the AFL needs to cut the trade week down at least three, four days to slow moves, massive hype for nothing. I'm I don't know how you feel about this, Dad. I'm in the camp of I like the length because what if you look at if you look at sports around the world like the NBA, it's rife with tampering throughout the season. I think what this trade period does is it gives clubs a clear time frame which says, right, do not talk to players who are contracted in the season extensively. We're going to give you a two-week period at the end of the year where you can come in. I mean, we know that at the start of this of this first week, it's going to be discussions for the most part. Um, and what it does is it allows clubs to do their due diligence. I understand it from the fans' point of view. We want to see deals come in. We want to see all of them come in. But you need to give, I think, the big benefit of having a lengthier trade period is you allow for the discussions to take place so there's no rushed deals and that way during the year you can get the players to focus on the footy and whatnot and I, I quite like it what about you Dan? Um, I mean I think when you look at the American models and that they, they also prepare their trades weeks months in advance don't they so like, like if you look at the big trades from the NBA you know like um, Anthony Davis and players like that that was in the works for six months. Yep. And okay, they've got a shorter period than we have to get the deals done. They're still doing it. So I think you're always going to have the speculation. And yeah, if it was a four-day period, we'd get them inundated in a short space. But to me, I mean, like, it's always going to be the same thing. Deals take ages. So yep. I've got no issue with it. It is a little bit heartbreaking the first couple of days, though, because we're all excited. Yep. I understand people's points, but... To me, there's not much you can do. It would just make the speculation worse, I think, if it was four days. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. Let's uh, let's have a look at one of the... George, we'll get to your question in a moment, mate. Um, let's have a look at uh, this potential trade that was offered, and I want to get everyone's opinion on this. Uh, I've got it on the screen here. So, Dan, you can't see it, but I'll read it out. It's uh, So, we would be giving up pick nine in this year's draft and a future third-round pick. Yeah. in exchange for Tom Papley and pick 25 in this year's draft, which would potentially go on to be used for, for Jack Martin. So if you're watching at home, what do you think about this as a potential deal? This was raised today. Uh, would you do it? Would you not? Why, why not? Dan, what do you think? Well, I think it works for both parties in the terms of it's a very good deal for us 
because we get something back as well as an A-grade player that we need. Um, and it also helps Sydney out because I believe they've got five academy players next year. Yep. So that future third will be a commodity. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's a win-win for both parties. I think maybe Sydney, if I was a Sydney fan, I'd feel like I'm getting fleeced. Two first-rounders for Danaher, lose Papley and a 25. Mm-hmm. But it's nice someone else is on the rough end of a trade deal for once. Yeah, I, I think it makes it. I mean, for me, I, I would have thought that the, the pick nine for a straight swap is what we it would be good because we know how good Tom Papley is. You know the age profile. He's potentially contracted for three more years, which we don't know completely if that's true yet. But I mean, if we're getting a pick back and we're using that pick for a Jack Martin situation, then I mean, by all means, that's what you've got to try and do, right? Ah, oh, I mean, if you can get something back, I mean. Like that 25 can do so much. It could be thrown in for the Martin trade with a swap of later picks to bring it up to that. You think 25 and 18 for a first rounder isn't many draft points. So that could be quite easily like a swap of a third for a fifth and it gets the job done. It works. The second rounds are the most important picks in the IFL draft. They're usually the steak knives in every deal. So to have one is really, 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 really important. Yep. Yeah, I agree, mate. I agree. Uh, we'll get some people's thoughts here. Tracy says we should get it done. Kano says it's his favourite part of the year on your Kano. Kano, do you have Skype? Because if you have Skype, I can call you in. This is not be live. Um, Peter Vlahos says it's a great deal. Get it done. Use pick 25 for Martin as well. Um, Riley thinks that the trade is fair, but at the same time, this would require us to get another pick back in 2020 to trade for Martin. Um Clinton, Bart McRae, that's the deal that's been tossed up a lot and is a fair deal for all. I think there's a general consensus uh, that this would be a good deal if it went through. So um, no issues there. Let's move on. Uh, next bit of news is is, is a, a recent bit of news that just sort of popped up out of nowhere. nowhere. It's um, this Ruckman, Mark Pitney, is uh, apparently... So Trade Radio spoke about it today. They said he's on our radar. And it, it, I mean, for obvious reasons... It could be a backup for if we do lose lose Andrew Phillips. Dan, do you have any information on this guy? I know it's last minute, last second, but like, who is Mark Pitney? What does he do? And for those of you watching at home, what do you think about getting him as a potential Phillips replacement? Yeah, so he's 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 been developing his game quite steadily in Box Hill. There's nothing that like strikes out that he's an absolute superstar. Far from it. But I mean, he's very solid. He's very steady. Um, he he does have the best on ground in the 2018. He was voted the best on ground for Box Hill themselves. He won the players and the coaches award for that. But he, I mean, he's steady. I mean, his his numbers aren't as bad as you would think. I mean, he's his his career hit outs are 25, which isn't isn't terrible. It's a lot to work with. He's not the oldest as well. I mean, he's only coming in at 23, so he's he's probably a great backup to have in the interim for TDK. I think it's it's kind of like, I, I would describe him as a not good version of Darcy Cameron. He's not as good, but there's definitely potential there. And he comes from a winning culture. I mean, Hawthorne are a phenomenally won football club. So, I mean, it, may, it makes sense. He's not going to cost a lot. And yeah, he's happy being back up behind Segler and McAvoy. So he should be happy being back up for cruiser and he probably does a job he's never performed badly when he's played for Hawthorne so yeah, yeah uh, I think the point about TDK is spot on we, you know you obviously you want to have someone to back up cruiser because right now as it stands cruiser's number one so you want to have someone to back up cruiser we probably think that TDK probably won't be ready for the first eight rounds next year so you kind of want someone in between it's not going to cost you much um, but like we've been saying all along I think most of the viewers have been saying this too that by the end of next season, you know Tom DeConning needs to be, you know our num- not maybe not our number one guy, but ready to take the mantle in twenty twenty one. I think that's the idea. Oh, definitely. I think Pitane is probably a good little sign in, in the terms of he just helps with that interim. He takes a bit of the load off. I mean, me personally, I think we should offer the Phillips the two years. Yep. I personally feel that. I think he's proved he's good enough. Um, I mean, 70% hit outs to advantage last year. He was fourth in the AFL for that. So, I mean, he, he's not a mug. He's a very, very reliable player, Phillips. And I yep. can't see him 
like to me, I'd rather have Phillips, but Pitten is as good as anything. We need we need a Ruckman, so he's not going to cost a lot. Get him in. Yep, I like it. I like it. Question here from Lippy: Is Cutler a depth option or a best twenty-two? Uh, well, like like I said, Riley's Riley's the guy that knows him. He's watched him, obviously. So it seems like he'd be in our best twenty-two. That would be a big. I mean, that would be a big get for us if that's the case. I don't know. I don't want to speculate too much, but if that's if he's a best twenty-two type guy, then we're going to look at it a little bit more seriously. I think potentially he's a best twenty-two. I mean, to be honest. You'd say the wing spots, like we've got to remember Jack Martin's not going to play in the forward pocket like people think. Yep. He does his best work on the outside. So you would say that the outside is pretty covered at Cowan. So I would say he's definitely going to be in and around the team. I'd say a top 25 player. Mm-hmm. But I think building up, he, he's got spots there available for him particularly. Yep. And he, as he grows, he's a phenomenal player, a great user. So yep. I think he's worth it. He's not going to cost much. Interesting. All right, let's just get one more bit of news out before we uh, turn the attention to the fans and let everyone ask a question. So we spoke about this last uh, last night. If you weren't watching, there's going to be a debate, and I've got the image on screen. We're, ha- we're hosting our first Blue Abroad debate on, um, on Thursday night at 7 p.m. The topic will be Eddie Betts because um, it's, it's a fascinating discussion. I noticed from the poll last week, was heavily in favour of bringing him back. There was a small section of those who voted for no. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to have a debate. Dan will be in the uh, making the case against Eddie Betts. And Riley, uh, Riley Starage, will be making the case for Eddie Betts. Both of you will get five minutes to talk about uh, your points of view, the for and the against. Then you'll get three minutes to rebut any argument that the other one's made. And uh, then we're going to leave it to the audience to decide who wins the debate. So we're looking forward to that. That'll be on Thursday night at 7 p.m. And I'm really looking forward to that. It should be a good discussion and a good way to get everyone engaged. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, Riley's a great guy. I love Riley. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. All right, let's open it up now. If anyone's got any questions, just discussion points you want to touch on, now's your time to put them through. We'll try and get through as many of these as we can. If you want to go over the 30-minute mark, we can also do that, but we'll try and keep it to 30 minutes. So we've got roughly, we've got about eight minutes to go. Um, Brandon, realistically, what trade bait do we have? Dan, what, what do we have as trade bait? I hate being asked this question. Um, I, I don't think it's changed. I think you could probably say that we could afford to, to ditch a midfielder if needed be. So I would say you'd probably look at, Fisher, maybe, I would say, would probably be on the outer. I I don't want him to go just before anyone jumps on board. I'm not saying it will, but I'd say probably a player in that ilk. Um, I'd say there'd probably be an argument to be made about Marchbank with his injury rating, but he is highly regarded in the AFL circles if Cowan wanted to cut that risk. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's a tough one, though, because I've kind of grown to love each one of our lists. Because all these young boys have been through the hard times. Yep. And I'd feel it'd be really stiff if a Fisher or a Marchbank or a Dow missed out on a flag because we needed trade bait. But it's it's a tough industry. So I'd, I'd say that's probably where they'd come from. I'd say probably them type of players. Those type of players. Yeah. Uh, Matt Michaels asking, what is his gaff talk all about? I, I think, I mean, I'm pretty sure that we can debunk it right now because... The, the chat yesterday, Matt, was about how Gaff could be used in a three-team deal with us and West Coast to help them get the deal with Tim Kelly over the line. It turns out that the t- the deal with Tim Kelly has been agreed to in principle. So I think what we'll find is this Gaff talk will just start quietening down. I mean, every year there is this talk of the big fish. Now, I mentioned it at the start of the show. I jumped on Big Footy. I don't know why I did it, but um, I saw like three or four different mentions of the word or the term or the phrase big fish. We're always going after a big fish. Grundy's name's been popped up there. Gaff's name's been out there. Clayton Oliver, Christian Petrarca, Oliver Wines. There's always a big fish that we're going after. And we are going after someone. Of course we are. There's a, there's a, there's got to be a play in the works there. But yeah, I, I, that to answer your question, Matt, that's where it's come from. I don't know if there's any truth to it. I don't feel like there's any truth to it. Dan, what about you, mate? Uh, I mean, it's a, I, I don't think he's a... I don't... I don't think we're in for him, to long story short. Yep. I do think Aggressor and Sauce 
when they said it could change we're after a midfielder if it's someone special. Gaff is that someone special. Very good footballer. Do yep. I think we need him though? Probably not. I don't he's he's not the combative inside midfielder you'd say we need. Yeah. And everyone keeps drumming on about it. AFL pundits, fans, Crips needs help. Gaff's not that type of player. Gaff's more I hate to say it because I'd, I'd say he's more that Lockie O'Brien role. He's on the outside. <laughs> he's on the outside waiting for the ball to come. Yeah. Like you watch how Eagles play. Yep. It's Yeo doing the hard work like Cripps does. Mm-hmm. So ideally, Yeo would be perfect. Yep. If you could get Yeo, be all over it. And we're good to go, yeah. Uh, Alex Thompson and a few people are asking about this. Uh, is Ben McKay worth picking up? I think there was a little bit of confusion because it got mentioned last night on Carlton Live. Ben McKay is not a ruckman. He was played as a ruck for a, for a short period of time this year when Goldstein went down in a game, and I think their next choice ruckman went down. Ben McKay is not a ruckman. He's not worth... Well, I don't know if he's worth getting picked up or not, but uh, people seem to have this idea that he could be a backup ruckman to fill the void between Cruiser and Tom DeConning. I can sell the argument quite easily. Since the age of 17, he's played 51 times and he's had 21 hitouts. So there you go. Bearing in mind that a lot of tolls play Rook. Harry McKay played a lot of Rook in his junior year because he's tall. A lot of players who are tall play Rook when they're youths. So if they didn't play it then, you've got to remember, Rookman, it's a craft. Yep. And if you don't have the talent to start with, it's not a learned skill. It's an inherent skill. Yep. Quick one here. Kano wants to know if we rookie Shoemaker. Kano's a big advocate for Angus Shoemaker. Uh, Kano broke the story that we're keeping number 19 open and we couldn't offer Shoemaker a deal because Eddie was going to take his number 19 back. So, Kano, I personally don't think we should re-rookie Shoemaker. Dan, what do you think? And what do you think in the audience? I think about which about which bit about Shoemaker. For so, number. for oh. me, the argument is, is is like it's pretty straightforward. Three years on the list when he was drafted. Um, if you can't break into this Carlton team when we are winning two games in a season, then you're probably not going to make it. That's my I, argument. I, I think I, I think you've got a point. Um, I do think. I mean, I, I I'm hearing massive things that he's playing for the he's p- playing for the Northern Blues next year. He's got a playing contract right. to play for the Northern Blues on their list, so he will still be around the club. Uh, there is strong mail coming from his dad, of all people, on the forum he runs that he's been offered a gig at Gold Coast but turned it down mm-hmm. and wants to try in Victoria. So to me, he's got he's got the heart. If you, anyone watched VFL, though, he found a lot of the ball, but he did turn it over, and we saw that in the AFL as well. So obviously the club has made a decision for a reason. So... I, I, he could he could well work his way back on the list. Gibbons overlooked countless drafts. DeLuca delisted and then re-signed. Players can come back. So hopefully he'll go away, have a year, work on his game, and he'll prove count and wrong and he'll come back and line up in the halfback plank. Yeah. Clinton's in the, in the camp about uh, bringing Ben McKay in and turning him into a ruckman. Because he said that uh, he said, did anyone think Levi would end up as a backman? I think there's a big distinction there. Uh, Ruck is a craft. Defending, you know, Levi was a forward, so he's used to reading the play there. But I mean, if you think he could be a ruckman, then you're well more than more than entitled to that opinion. Um, So there you go. I think we've got to remember about conversions as well. The majority of successful conversions are from midfield to half forward, Mm -hmm. and vice versa. Very similar job. Forwards to Batman, Batmans to forwards. Kale Hooker, great example. Levi Casbolt, another one. You've got to remember, they are defending what they're attacking and attacking what they're defending. Yep. Quite a good knowledge. A lot of AFL coaches, backline coaches are forwards, forward line coaches are back coaches. Very similar aesthetic. But a Ruckman, it's a, it's a skill. It's like a leg spinner in cricket. Do you know what I mean? You either have the natural gift or you don't. The fact he hasn't been utilised from the age of 15, suggests that every AFL scout hasn't thought of it. Yeah. So to me, there it is. I agree. I agree. Uh, I would like to bring one thing up, though. I know Riley mentioned how would 25 be used for Martin. Just so everyone knows, this is the theory behind why 25 could be used for Martin. Using the AFL pick calculator, 
if Carlton gave 25 and 42 to Mr. Gold Coast, that the pick that they get from the Papley deal, and Gold Coast gave us a 70 back, I know it's a throwaway pick, that actually equates to a pick 15 to 14 to 15. Right. So there's your first rounder. That's You've got to remember, that's why I always say second rounder is the most important pick in the AFL. They, they are, don't lose much value. Mm-hmm. So there you are. That, that's how you could do it. So it could really? be a great bit of business by Sauce, that. Yep. Good discussion point here with Tom DeConning. George is saying that he thinks Tom DeConning is ready to get a game. Look at what the dogs have done with English. It's a good point, George. It's a very good point. Bloody Merle, you've got to also remember that Tom DeConning missed eight weeks in 2019 with an injury and also another eight or nine weeks last year with the back injury. Now, Tim English didn't have that happen. So you just want to be careful with Ruckman. You've got to also remember the cruiser factor. We played a lot of game. We put a lot of games into cruiser early in his career. Rucks do not last long traditionally. Um, very few get to 250, 300 games. Um, so you've got to be wary of that. I just think there's no rush. We're not in a, in a desperate rush to play him just yet. But it's a very good point. You want to throw him in early and see what he's made of. Oh, definitely. I mean, also, English was regarded as the best ruckman at the Combine since Brodie Grundy went at pick 18 in the 2012 draft. So no one said that about him in the Combine and at the time TDK. So he's a little bit behind English and that aesthetic. English had the rook craft down pat. Yep. And it was never going to be a doubt. That's why no one was surprised. And also English, phenomenal for his height. He doesn't suffer these lower body injuries. He's a bit like Brody Grundy in the terms of he seems to go on forever. Mm-hmm. So I, I would always err on the side of caution with, I think you've got a great point though, George. I think he is ready and I think he'll be a great player. I just think for me, learn your lesson from Cruiser. Let's feed him in if we can feed him in if and at the moment cruiser's going well feed him in gently yep last few ones here before we get going for the night um matt go muslin said he saw mitch clear his mock trade his trade was given the swans pick nine and third round yeah we put that trade up earlier on the show today matt go that was there um there was another good comment here i wanted to get to um Weldy says that the longer the Papley non-trade drags on, the more I think the Dons make a play for him to replace Fantasia. It's a good point. It's something that's going to be in there. I, I was I, I was talking about this with someone offline. I mean, if Tom Papley does end up going to the Bombers, there's going to be a big backlash from all the Carlton supporters when we do play them. So that'll be interesting. I will say this with the Fantasia. The Fantasia replacement they've already got in yeah. Irving Mosquito. Yeah. The Essendon, the Essendon coaches and the fans rave about this kid. And if you yeah. see him play exceptionally gifted footballer. So I think, I, I really do heart of heart believe Essendon won't make a play for him. Yep. I think Essendon's focus is on combative midfielders and another bit of outside run. I think they're focused on Mosquito. He will get a chance next year and yep. I think he'll be a superstar. Yep. Kano's bringing back Shoemaker to the point saying he would hate for him to go to another club and flourish like Gowers and Holman. Uh, I would argue that you probably, Gowers wouldn't get a game in our starting forward line and you know, Nick Holman, when he was at the club, didn't take his chance. I mean, at the end of the day, you, you, you've got your chance in front of you. You've got three years. You didn't take it. You couldn't break in. Um, you weren't injured. It, it's kind of like, yeah. I've got to say, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm the most opinionated person in the world. But I have got to back the, li- I've got to back the list managers and the coaches. If they, they don't see something, there's got to be a reason. There's got to be a reason because you think the heart... The small forward, the general defender role at Carlton Football Club is very thin if you think about it. Like yeah. Tom Williamson's always injured. Kid Simpson's got a year left. Why would they get rid of someone they've put two, three years into who is a natural replacement for Simpson? Yeah. A natural replacement. Why would they? They wouldn't have done that easily. So there has to be a reason. Yeah. Johnny Rowe, good evening to you, mate. He's saying that we were asked last night, would Ben be worth getting to Carlton? I suggested we would have too many tall backmen, so you would only consider him if he could transfer into a ruck, given that he played there as a junior. Not at any stage did we call him a ready-to-go ruckman. I don't think anyone is suggesting you did say that he was a ready-to-go ruckman. I'm simply saying he's not a ruckman. You can't just bring him in and have the idea of bringing him in as a ruckman if he's not that, uh, just to suit the fact of bringing him in. Um, But it's good to hear from you, John. Uh, It's good to get a reply. Waldy, Luke Parker is what I'm hearing as a mystery midfielder. 
That's an interesting one. Oh, he'd be a dream. He would. I love watching Lukey Parker. Parker to Papley is probably how 90% of Sydney score their goals. 100%. Oh, get him in. 100%. Stop teasing me. All right, guys, let's leave it there. We've just ticked over 35 minutes. Thank you very much for your time. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7 p.m. for the Daily News again. Hopefully there's some actual Carlton trades that go through. Uh, but if not, we'll give you the update on what's relevant. Have a good night. Night, guys.